Today I'd like to talk to you about just the general reaction of a nucleophile with a carbonyl group. So here we have a carbonyl. We happen to have a ketone in this case. It could be an aldehyde. And some nucleophile, you'll notice our nucleophile also has a hydrogen atom attached to it. So we can think of this as a nucleophile and a proton. And the nucleophile is going to add to the carbonyl carbon, which is electrophilic. And the proton is going to end up on the oxygen, which we know is the basic part of the molecule. And we end up with this tetravalent carbon now. So we go from sp2 hybridized to sp3 hybridized carbon. Our nucleophiles attached to that carbon that was formerly sp2 hybridized, the carbonyl carbon. And our proton is on the oxygen. So there's two ways that this reaction can be done. It can be done under basic conditions. And we'll try that first. So the reaction actually involves First, the reaction of our nucleophile with some base. I'm going to use hydroxide. And that generates our negatively charged nucleophile. And now, is where we will add our negatively charged nucleophile. And we have H2O up here, just to keep track. Our negatively charged nucleophile, one of those pairs of electrons, is going to attack the carbonyl carbon of the ketone. We're going to promote our pi electrons up onto the oxygen. So we get this negatively charged oxygen species. Our nucleophile is now attached to the carbon, which was formerly the carbonyl carbon. And don't forget we have our water molecule is still around. I just carried that over to here. Now we can pull that off, and we end up with our final product. And look what we reform at the end, our hydroxide. So we only need a catalytic amount of base. The other way this reaction can be done is under acidic conditions. If we're under acidic conditions, we're going to do things slightly differently. Now we're going to start off with our ketone. And we're going to react that with some base. I'm going to react it with H3O+. As my acid. doesn't matter. Maybe I threw some HCl uh, in this and there's enough water around that we protonate it. And we're going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen. The most basic oxygen of this molecule is the carbonyl oxygen. I'm sorry, the most basic point of this molecule is the carbonyl oxygen. And we're just going to pull off the proton. And when we do that, we have our protonated carbonyl compound. This thing is now a very good electrophile. Don't forget, well, we talked about uh, in class that we can draw a resonance structure of this where we have a single carbon-oxygen bond and the positive charge on the carbon, and that indicates the electrophilic carbon is now even more electrophilic because we can draw a resonance structure which has a full positive charge. So now our nucleophile doesn't need to be deprotonated like it was up here to form a strong nucleophile, we could do this even with a nu weak nucleophile. Notice that we push our electrons the same. We attack the electrophilic carbon and we promote our pi electrons onto the oxygen so that we end up in uh, the next step. We have an sp3 hybridized carbon.
and an sp3 hybridized carbon uh, oxygen with a negative charge now uh, We need to pull this proton off. We can pull that proton off with water. Uh, we, oh, sorry. I see why I was confused. We had protonated that oxygen before. So now our water molecule which was formed over here And just pull off this proton and get us to our final product. And notice that we reform our acid, which we started with over here, so our acid is also catalytic. So we can add weak nucleophiles by using acidic conditions, and we can use strong nucleophiles by starting off with uh, what is really acting as an acid, pull off the proton, and then use the conjugate base of that reaction as our nucleophile to add.